Can we have an honest chat about my concerns for the 50-30-20 budget rule? Why I'm so incredibly worried and concerned about this for your financial future? And then share with you something that I think might be better for you to help you actually efficiently achieve your financial goals and dreams. This is Sugar Mama TV. Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner, Kanna Campbell. And as always, I'm here every single week to help make sure that you are educated, inspired, and empowered when it comes to achieving all of your financial goals and dreams. And as you are familiar, not all of my content is always financially driven. I share with you inside my home, with my kids, motherhood, and of course, I share with you my love of capsule wardrobe fashion because I'm a financial planner that has a realistic approach to life and really values balance. So if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do. And of course, you're following me on Instagram and TikTok. Now, today I wanna to talk to you about this 50, 30, 20 rule, which is seems to be back in fashion. And I'm really concerned about it because I actually think there are a lot of issues and I feel like there's a lot of landmines with this particular rule for people to follow with their money. And I'm saying this from personal experience as well as professional. So what is the 50, 30, 20 budget rule? So it was created back in 2006 by a lady in America. And what it essentially says is that 50% of your income just goes towards your needs. So needs are your essentials for living and survival. So rent or mortgage repayments, food, utilities. Then 30% of your money goes towards your needs. So this is very much lifestyle driven. For example, clothing, eating out, holidays, weekends away, gym memberships. And then 20% of your income goes towards savings. Now this is under a very vague umbrella of savings and it can technically include debt reduction along with savings and investing. But essentially that's it. And it's very very easy to understand. However, it's not easy really to follow in this world. So let me share with you why I have issues with this. Number one is I feel like it's really outdated. This was created in 2006. Now, the world is very different now with the rising cost of living, rising interest rates. A lot of people, including myself, there is no way that I could fit 50% of my income to cover my needs. My needs, my essentials are way more than 50% of my net income. So I would imagine immediately fail right there. And when we fail, most of us tend to throw the towel in and give up. We don't feel empowered. So I have a big issue that is very outdated. The other issue I have is it can potentially really hold someone back from achieving their goals in a more efficient way. What if you have someone who lives at home and their essential expenses are much lower? Or what if you have someone who actually doesn't have a mortgage? They may not necessarily have a 50% needs expense. They actually may be able to live off a need, say 30% or 20%. And by following that rule, it means that their money is potentially being wasted or not used efficiently. So that is another big issue. And what if you have someone whose wants are actually very simple? They don't have expensive lifestyle needs and desires. That money could actually be used to put towards their financial future, it could be investing more or paying down debt faster. So it's a very one size fits all that I don't think this is very relevant for this world. And then if you take into consideration where people live, the cost of living dramatically varies from country to country, but also from state to state. I know myself, I live in Sydney and it's incredibly expensive, but for my friends that live in regional towns, the cost of living is very very, very different. So if my friends who are living in a regional town with a lower cost of living, but were following this rule, they would potentially be undermining their potential financial successes and goal achievement. Whereas for me, I would struggle to follow that formula and I would feel like a failure and potentially give in. The other big issue I have with this is it's not goal driven. You follow this percentage system, but where does it take you? How does it inspire you? How does it actually look at some important financial strategies and decisions like preparing for retirement, saving up for a home, paying off a home, and most importantly, investing. 
because we all know that the way to build financial resilience, freedom and security is to have investing as part of your strategy throughout your life. So under this formula, where does investing fit in under the 20%? Is it 5%, 7%, 10%? There's no real guide, it's just far too vague. And then finally, where do I feel empowered through this? If I was to miraculously squeeze my budget into this very restrictive controlling rule, where do I feel empowered to actually look at my goals and dreams? How do I actually factor that in there if I've got to figure out this strict formula? It doesn't actually think about where I want to go in my life and what I want to achieve and those big aspirations and goals that give us this energy and pizzazz for life. So as you can now understand, I don't think this is a great rule or guide to follow. And as a financial planner with over 20 years experience, my job was to help take everyday people and turn them into millionaires or help take millionaires and turn them into multi-millionaires. And I have to say, none of my clients ever followed this rule because we knew that it wouldn't work. It wasn't liberating, it wasn't empowering and it didn't allow for the natural evolution of life. For example, when you have kids that finally move out of home and you've got actually more money set aside, if you follow this rule, it's just that money's just gonna sit there. What what if you could be doing something better with your money, like preparing for retirement or investing more or looking at an investment property. This is where this is very restrictive and short minded. So what I actually recommend is you do a dollar based system. Now this is what I have taught all of my clients and this is what I personally follow myself and that it has given me incredible financial success, but more importantly, financial progress through the natural evolution of life. So this is how it works. You look at the dollar base. So you look at what is the total cost of your living experience expenses. And then when you look at that, you squeeze in what you can afford to, but you look to build upon from that over time when you can. It's a lot more empowering, but also it's a lot more gentle. So say for example, I earn $7,500 per month after tax. After looking at my expenses, I now know that I need $4,000 per month to cover my short term living essentials, my mortgage, my rent, my food, my utilities. So that would stay in my everyday account. I then know that I need $1,000 per month to help me plan and prepare for all of my irregular expenses like quarterly, biannual and annual expenses. Those quarterly utility bills, my car rego, tires, maintenance, Christmas time. That $1,000 per month would be allocated into a second account, what I call your life slash financial float account. Then I would think about my emergency money and work out how much emergency money I would need and I would set up within my living expense and what I can afford a regular investment money savings plan of say $500 per month. Now this now leaves me with $2,000 left over. I would then look at this $2,000 and think about some of my goals. For example, I might have some pesky credit card debt, but I also know that I want to start investing. Now, technically, yes, you should always focus on paying off non-deductible debt first, but hey, I'm not a rules-driven person. You need to do what's right for you and what drives you and makes you feel empowered and excited about your future so that you actually feel like you are going to stick to this plan and make those long-term life decisions. So with that $2,000, I might set up a regular debt repayment plan of $1,000 per month so I can see that credit card debt gone. Or if I have the goal of saving up for a home, I might set up a regular savings plan of $1,000 per month. I then feel very empowered to start investing. So I might set up a regular investment plan of $1,000 per month. See how I've now allocated my money in a very simple way, but looking at what I actually earn, what my real cost of living is, and it's all dollar based. Now, this is why I think this is much better in helping you progress with your goals. The moment that pesky credit card debt is paid off, guess what? I have an extra $1,000 freed up that I can put towards my other goals. See how I'm actually ticking goals off, I'm actually progressing and actually building financial resilience and well-being. I can now move on and look at upping my regular investment plan or making sure that I save up that emergency money faster. I'm actually empowered and I'm in the driving seat the whole time so I can decide where that money goes. And I can even start to look at other financial goals such as preparing for retirement, whether it be including my superannuation plan or if you're in New Zealand, your KiwiSaver or in America, your 401k plan. This is where you start to realize you've actually got choice and you've got opportunities around you to work on your well-being well into the long run. This is not about quick fixes and this formula actually evolves with 
with you. Now, if you are interested in me helping you with your budget, helping you set up your budget the right way the first time so that you can actually be in control of your money and actually see yourself progressing financially with your goals and building up a greater sense of financial resilience, I highly recommend checking out the Sugar Mama Budget and Cash Flow Academy. I have linked this in the video description box below for you. But once you enroll in this, you actually get to book a 30 minute one on one session with me where we can go through your budget together, brainstorm other ideas to help you save more money, to help you earn extra money so that you are well and truly back on track. And I will show you how to have a great money routine with your cash flow so that you understand how to correctly allocate your money to the right accounts so you can actually see your financial well being progress evolve over time and feel really empowered and excited the whole way through. So it's well worth checking out this academy. All right, everyone, please let me know what you think of this video, whether you enjoyed it by giving me a thumbs up because I look at your feedback and I love this channel to be directed by you. So let me know what you'd like as the next video. In the meantime, I hope you are all safe. I hope that you are all well, and I hope that you can now see the dangers and traps of this 50, 30, 20 rule. Because I really want to make sure that you have all the tools, all the knowledge, and all the insights to thrive financially. This is Sugar Mama TV. Ciao for now.